What well, man, we're on a budget. I don't have enough money for tinfoil. <laughs> Whatever, let's just roll the intro. The first part of this video is going to be dedicated to the hardware software tweaks which could be done directly to the phone to see how Remote ID would behave. I was thinking of using an old XR6M10 tablet that has no GPS or buying a Benko V80S which is a device without GPS or camera. The version of DJI Fly that supports Remote ID requires Android 7 and the tablet would not update that far. The Benko phone is not available in the US at this time and the last thing I attempted was looking at sandboxing solutions like Shelter or Island and finding that location services are actually bound to the device and cannot be sandboxed at the work profile level. If you're on a device like the Avada, you definitely need your phone, but if you don't want to get that 5G radiation or that 4G radiation, you might be tempted to put in a paint can. Paint cans are actually great for isolating from a network. They've actually been used by security professionals and computer forensics guys like myself for years. It's a dirty little secret that a $9 paint can can actually block the vast majority of 4G signals and GPS. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna flip this over onto the ground, and there you go. Your phone is now uh, isolated. Now the question is, and I'm gonna start the recording on the, uh, on the, on my drone ID. And the question is, will I be able to take off? Yep, take off is in progress. And we're off the ground. Now, once we get our first drone ID beacon, did we really just kill DJI's implementation of the, of remote ID? Oh, there it is, finally, we have one beacon and it has a GPS location for the user. So it won't broadcast the beacon until it gets a GPS location for the user? When you're using DJI Fly. Uh, We're gonna come back to that in a follow-up video. I can already feel it. Cut it. All right, for this one, we're using a Faraday cage. This is gonna cost you some serious money. Expect to spend $52 for one with a, with a screen. You can barely make out the screen. You have to basically like push down on it to see it. But uh, the one without it is like 28 bucks. Could be worth it if you wanna go from a gallon paint can to not gallon paint can. Let's see if we can take off. We're in the air. Now the question is, do we get remote ID beacons? And the answer is, the answer is no beacons so far. Dude, I think, I think if you, if you, if DJI Fly doesn't get an operator location, it won't broadcast. Uh, okay, here we go. And we have an operator location. So it was able to punch through. Huh? A minute 40? Jesus. So the drone is in the air and we have put it inside of the Mission Darkness bag, inside of the gallon container, and we will see if we get a beacon. Now the beacon should be providing the GPS location of the device and it's already have a beacon and there you go. Um, the one thing I will say is that all of these beacons that I'm picking up say that the altitude is like negative 100 meters, like if we're on the ground, but it doesn't seem like any of these measures are stopping the GPS from working. But we have noticed that it won't dispatch a beacon from DJI Fly unless it has an operator control uh, portion ready to go. So if you can in some way stop the operator control portion from existing through exposed or rooting or something like that, I am 100% sure that DJI Fly's remote ID will be broken. Uh, that's, that's, that's it for now. I don't have anything else. Anything else, cameraman? You wanna, you wanna look around, show off all the other crap we have here? Nice. Let's make a tactical landing and get out.